Thank you for joining us for another episode um, in this uh, series that we started a while back. And let me welcome you to the month of March. For those that have not heard or seen any of our video, this is March 2021. Uh, and today, uh, one question that people have asked me over time in the last few months is how exactly do I know the investment that is actually right for me, that there, there are plenty of options that I have. You see a lot of mutual funds and you see quite a lot of things. How do I know exactly the kind of right investment for me? So what I've done is to draw up like a seven uh, points that you need to understand to decide whether an investment is right for you or not. But mind you, this is not exhaustive. There are still a lot of factors you need to take in. But baseline, if you're able to answer this question, if you understand this stage, it's going to go a long way to help you make the decision to decide uh, whether the investment is right for you. So the first one here is the stages of your life. The investment you can make when you're young, the investment you should not make when you are old. For example, a young man who is uh, 21 that wants to start investment can afford to be a little bit more aggressive and decide I want to try my hand at equities or stock, I want to try my hand at trading, I want to try my hand at this and that because he has time. If he fails today, he can only speak himself because he has a longer time to actually correct that mistake. And apart from that, some of the responsibility we take on later in life, he might not have them at that point. So even if his finances is significantly affected, he is independent enough to know that he can actually come back there. So the, the stages of life. So what I would just briefly say is if the younger person can take a bit more, but as you, as you mature, as you age, you want to actually move a lot of your investment to safer um, zones you're talking about you want to do a lot of particularly if you're, if you're near retirement age, for example well, I would encourage you to play around more with fixed income instrument preferably sovereign bonds those ones are guaranteed they are not likely to fail and they provide a steady source of income I will still talk about some of the things you can have that are secure that you can add to you know, if you're middle age yeah, you know you have responsibilities you're sending kids to school but at the same time you still have a little bit more time to invest so what can you do you're looking at instruments that can actually grow in value or what you call capital appreciation and then you are looking at instruments that can also give you a bit of cash flow so you see how the stage of life can affect the kind of investment consideration so if you're if you're 45 uh, or 40 and then you're planning to invest you're trying to look at both options what can give me a bit of capital appreciation or growth in the value of the investor that is safe enough and then what can provide me some cash flow for those who have the well with our real estate actually fall into this category. They provide a bit of cash flow, but usually in Nigeria, the rental yield is between five to eight percent uh, on the average. Uh, in some places can be higher or lower. And then you also appreciate if you buy it for 20 naira today, it will be 25 naira next year, it could be 30 naira in two years' time. So that's the balance. So your stage of life, you need to ask yourself, what stage am I in, and what am I need? Do I need? Do I have the time to wait for it to grow, and so on and so forth? So that is number one. Number two, the knowledge of the investment. This is key. In fact, it should be number one. Any investment you do not have knowledge of, do not invest in them. Instead of investing in, uh, you know, some, uh, I've had friends who have approached me that I want to invest in this one. They pay this amount every month. And I asked them, what exactly do they do with your money? He said, I don't know. And some of them, frankly, don't care. But they want to invest because a friend is investing. They want to invest because they heard from a boss conductor who said, this investment is paying this and then they rush to invest most of them end up losing their money so you need to have a deep knowledge of what they do with your anywhere you're investing what exactly do they do with your money for example you're investing with federal government they fund public sector so the budget with it they fund infrastructure and so on and so forth if you're investing in stock the number one thing you must know before you invest in any stock is you must understand that it is every share, you know to share is just a piece of paper what is the most important element is the company behind that particular share so you want to understand the business that that company is doing if you don't know the business that company is doing, if you cannot explain it to a two-year-old within two three four minute max then do not invest in that particular so, so for example i could say i, I want to buy a zenith bank stock i understand what they do i understand how they do it i've seen their brand is strong in the market i've seen that they've grown year on year the management transition was smooth so i, I could actually say look i understand this a bit and i can actually invest knowing that zenith and if you have go check the uh the, the unit price for their stock 10 in the last five 
10, 15, 20 years, you will see a consistent growth. Yes, there will be dips, and that is the nature of the market. So you must understand the investment, you must understand how it works, you must understand what they use the funds to do, because that will determine what you will. And if you don't understand, or if you do not agree with what they do with your money, if you don't feel comfortable, then do not invest. That is one way to also determine what is right. The spot you know, the investment you know, you're comfortable with. Preferably sometimes, if it's in your sector. I mean, the healthcare sector, for example. So I could decide that I want to invest in stocks of pharmaceuticals. So I'm asking, which pharmaceutical can I? Okay, there's an anti-malaria that is in demand now. This company pro, uh, produces them. I could say I want to invest in that, knowing that everybody will use anti-malaria at some point or the other, and that is millions of doses. Every, so knowledge of uh, every day or every 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 year. So knowledge of the investment is very key. Number, th number three is your risk tolerance. No matter your age, even if you understand a particular kind of business, you may be risk averse. You may not want to take risk investment actually ha would have ups and down now your your risk tolerance will determine how you will respond in adversity so you, you invest in a particular stock and then the value is going down the question is are you going to sell off or do you want to hold um and then are you are you sane enough are you stable enough to actually review your position objectively or you are too attached and then every time your stock price goes down, your heart rate also goes down. You need to actually understand that. In fact, a lot of investment banking companies, one of the first things they would do if you decide to have what you call manage account is to say, look, take a risk assessment. And that risk assessment can be taken free of charge on our platform. So just log on to uh, www.casafna.com.ng and then click on risk assessment. You should be able to take that risk. It gives you an idea of what your risk profile is, your risk preferences. So if you are somebody that is very risk averse, you want to just pack your investment into safe assets, preferably those that are fixed income assets that you are sure that nothing can shake it, at least uh, as far as we know. If you are somewhere in more conservative middle, you could actually do a mix, a balance of both. And then if you are very, very risk embracing, you could try a bit more. But also you need to balance it with the first one that we said, what stage of life are you? Then number four is your current cash flow. How much cash are you making? This is what I usually say that if you're making, let's say your, your need, your expense per month is 10 naira and you're making 100 naira. What it means is you have a lot of margin so you can afford to do uh, some types of investing. But if you're earning 10 naira and your expense is 9 naira 50 couple, you also must understand that you cannot afford to lose a lot because you don't have the margin to absorb it. So that determines the kind of investment you will make. So if, if you have a lot of cushion in terms of income, you can decide to actually, and the, the cash flow is huge. You can say, look, I want to focus on real estate investment. It's capital intensive, yes, but I have the cash flow to back it. I'm going to buy on mortgage because I know that I can repay over a period of time. And, you know, for those who are interested in mortgage, uh, we provide uh, one of the best mortgage term in Nigeria for our properties. So those are the considerations that you will need. What kind of cash do I want to invest? Also, uh, there, there, there are some kind of investment that you cannot access unless you can actually drop the big ticket entry level investment amount. So those things will actually affect you. And the good thing is, is every level, whether you are earning in the low end, whether you are earning in the high end, whether and in the middle, you have investment that you can take advantage of. You have opportunities uh, to invest in different different asset class. A lot of mutual fund exists today that the entry level is as low as one thousand or five thousand or ten thousand, which is generally very affordable. And you can save it over time. But whatever your cash flow, the most important part of this cash flow thing is that you must automate your savings every month consistently every week consistently depending on what your income is like you must you want to keep a portion of it you see the, the maximum that you should pay yourself first is actually a very key one a lot of people collect salary and share it with family friends they share it with family they share with you know and so on and so forth but they do not pay themselves first if you don't do that you would actually end up losing all the money so you must pay yourself first i usually would say that please pay yourself at least 20 percent of your income per time and keep it where you cannot just go and access it when a friend requests for cash and then put it in safe or in instruments that you understand that you've reviewed that you are risk 
adjusted to that will help you a lot number five the time you are aligning of your investment is key you see you, you, there are some investments that you can do for one year so if you, if you have cash that you know you're going to need uh next month on three months on four months on five months you want to invest in maybe fixed deposit uh with any of the uh, banks or finance houses uh because that timeline is short if you're looking at one year you could also invest in treasury bill even though the rates are pretty low at the moment those are shorter time investment that could help you if you have longer term let's say you have 20 million today and you know that you can afford to actually invest the 20 million for 10 years you could decide to say i want to invest in real estate knowing that there's no way particularly if you buy right and you make your choices of real estate right there's no way that that investment will not pay off so your timeline also decide determines the kind of investment you want to do then the external factor all these factors that i mentioned earlier i listed them under internal factor those are things that relate to you now for the external factor i won't go into details but i'll just mention two points that are very important the first one i will mention coincidentally will be devaluation really uh one of the things you for those who are, who are watching the nigerian economy if you had ten thousand uh, dollars 20 years ago you would probably uh have about that is about um 3.3 million at 165 or 10 years ago let's say 10 years ago that's about 3. Point something million Today, if you have that same $20,000, that is roughly $9 million. Now, let's invert this discussion and say, look, if I have um, $1.6 million or $1.65 million 10 years ago, that is $10,000 US dollars. And I keep the money in Naira in a fixed deposit, no matter what is yielding for me. And then fast forward from 10 years ago to now, your $1.6 million that was $10,000 is probably just about 3000 or 3500 max maybe uh slightly under four thousand dollars what it means is if you don't factor in the power of devaluation on your investment and the purchasing power of your cash you are going to be losing money the guy that kept it in naira since 19 uh since 2011 has lost 60 percent or more of the value of their investment so if you're looking at long term for example see all this can be combined in various portions so if you're looking at very long term investment what you can do you can, and you understand that uh, devaluation is a major risk to the value of your asset you can say look how do i make sure that my investment does not suffer for, from devaluation over the period of it? so what are the instruments that can stay ahead and be at par as this one i mean real estate is a very good uh, store of value stock is a very good source of value uh in this because generally business would grow and adjust based on all these uh factors so you need to actually take that into consideration this is what i generally encourage you to do as much as possible have exposure to uh forex denominated instrument and they're quite available there are a lot of dollar denominated mutual funds in nigeria there are dollar denominated bond or what you call a euro bond that you could actually invest in particularly if you are worried about devaluation and then you have a long timeline of investment and then your stage of life allows you to actually uh, wait a while and then you understand the instrument you can see how all this play out it's not just isolated event so you want to actually take a look at that the other one is inflation um, you know I would define inflation as the relative loss in the purchasing power of the cash that you have if you had uh, five million five years ago or six years ago you probably will be able to buy a brand new toyota corolla maybe 10 years ago today if you have five million you probably will not be able to buy um you can't you, you can't five million might not even do a 20 50 percent down payment for the same corolla what it means is that uh with time currency will lose value or money cash will lose value so you need to take into consideration and one of the things when you invest one of the things you want to target is to make sure the return on your investment is way above the inflation rate otherwise you are losing money so you need to factor this one so when you're investing you ask yourself which investment would actually help me to stay ahead of inflation i think i keep coming back to real estate because i've seen the power of real estate in actually helping to edge your investment against uh these two factors so i'm going to stop it because i've spent longer time than i should have but those are seven items or seven checklists you could use it's, it's not exhaustive you want to do your own research you want to actually ask your investment advisor what are the other things you could take into consideration when you're determining the kind of investment or the right investment for you i hope this 
particular uh, session has been of value. I hope you will take it. I hope you will use it. And I hope you come back to us and say, look, this was of value. Please drop your comment if you, this thing has been of value to you and click on the subscribe button at the bottom of this video. It will encourage us to know that whatever we're doing here is adding value to you. Thank you. And until I see you next time, have a wonderful month.